pour qui, justement, c'était la, 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 la chose capitale en, en poésie. Et donc, Chameus a cette faculté extraordinaire de réconcilier. D'ailleurs, je crois que le poète, c'est aussi l'homme, et que l'homme et le poète, en l'occurrence, il réconcilie. La façon dont il est aimé par la communauté poétique irlandaise, dut-il en rougir, est, euh, est extraordinaire. Et donc, il a cette réputation de réconciliateur, de conciliateur, qui fait la grandeur de sa poésie, pas simplement humaine, mais aussi technique. Il réconcilie le son et le sens. Et voilà pourquoi ce soir, nous sommes tellement re redevables à lui, reconnaissants à lui d'être venus jusqu'à Paris pour nous faire entendre combien sa musique est intelligente. Merci. First two poems, George, and um, they are about, I mentioned them being, poetry being a visitation sometimes, uh, or a sense of uh, something given. So this one, the first one is really a, an Irish story um, about a, a fiddler who gets a tune out of the wind, a given note. On the most westerly blasket, in a dry stone hut, he got this air out of the night. Strange noises were heard by others who followed, bits of a tune coming in on loud weather, though nothing like melody. He blamed their fingers and ear as unpractised, their fiddling easy, for he had gone alone into the island and brought back the whole thing. The house throbbed, like his full violin. So whether he calls it spirit music or not, I don't care. He took it out of wind off mid-Atlantic. Still he maintains from nowhere. It comes off the bow gravely, rephrases itself into the air. Had I not been awake with the first poem in a recent book, but before that, I think I have to uh, read a little, trans say a little translation of an early Irish poem called The Blackbird of Belfast Loch. It's all about the noise of uh, the birds. Noise, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, it's a little, it's just uh, 24 syllables, really. The small bird chirp, chirped, <laughs> yellow nib, a note spurt, blackbird over lag and water, so, so, jumping of something, sunburst. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, had I not been awake is another visitation, wind, uh, Pentecostal stuff. Yes. Had I not been awake, I would have missed it. A wind that rose and whirled until the roof pattered with quick leaves off the sycamore and got me up, the whole of me a patter, alive and ticking like an electric fence. Had I not been awake, I would have missed it. It came and went so unexpectedly and almost it seemed dangerously, returning like an animal to the house, a courier blast that there and then laps ordinary, but not ever after, and not now. A poem called Digging, and uh, I, I heard there's a record of W.B. Yeats <clears throat> reading the uh, Lake Isle of Innisfree in late years, and he said, if you know anything about my work, you'll know the lake I live in is free. So, so I have to say the same if you know anything about my work. You'll know this poem called Digging, Curtain, Rosier. Between my finger and my thumb, the squat pen rests, snug as a gun. Under my window, a clean rasping sound when the spade sinks into gravelly ground. My father, digging. I look down till his straining rump among the flower beds bends low, comes up twenty years away, stooping in rhythm through potato drills where he was digging. 
The coarse boot nestled on the lug. The shaft against the inside knee was levered firmly. He rooted out tall tops, buried the bright edge deep to scatter new potatoes that we picked, loving their cool hardness in our hands. I God the old man could handle a spade, just like his old man. My grandfather cut more turf in a day than any other man on Toner's bog. Once I carried him milk in a bottle, corked sloppily with paper. He straightened up to drink it, then fell to right away, nicking and slicing neatly, heaving sods over his shoulder, going down and down for the good turf, digging. The cold smell of potato mould, the squelch and slap of soggy peat, the curt cuts of an edge through living roots awaken in my head. But I've no spade to follow men like them. Between my finger and my thumb, the squat pen rests. I'll dig with it. The gift of a fountain pen. Second last poem you would like to hear. Now that your pen is in my hand, and I have fears that poems may cease to be, what of the years of every other obligation imposed and undertaken? All that do unto others as you would have done unto you. Mistaken? Virtue? Yes and no. I dip and fill and start again. Doubts or no doubts, let flow. And finally, postscript. It's really a poem in praise of the west, and the winds of County Clare Coast. I really want to say what a privilege it has been to have such an audience and to be here with people who spoke in favor of the enterprise. The, the sense of service to the art and to the audience uh, is wonderful in, in Marche de Poesie and, to, and at this venerable college now a vivid and uh, you know, important place for Irish culture at home and abroad changes the game. So uh, Thank you very much. Postscript. And sometime make the time to drive out west into County Clare, along the flaggy shore, in September or October, where the wind and the light are working off each other, so that the ocean on one side is wild with foam and glitter, and inland among stones, the surface of a slate grey lake is lit by the earth lightning of a flock of swans, their feathers roughed and ruffling, white on white, their fully grown, headstrong looking heads, tucked or cresting or busy underwater. Useless to think you'll park and capture it more thoroughly. You are neither here nor there, a hurry through which known and strange things pass, as big soft buffetings come at the car sideways and catch the heart off guard and blow it open. Thank you very much.